How, how, how was practice yesterday? You know what? Practice was good. I, I, I uh, you know, people were talking about where the offense is and the defense and how the offense looks sluggish and the defense has gotten, you know, the better of them. And, and, and I was talking to Matt Eberflus in his office before, and I said, you know, every team, every really good team, and I'm not going to say national championship or Super Bowl, but every very good team that I've ever been a part of, when you start the first week of training camp, if your defense is not ahead of your offense, mm -hmm. you're not going to have it. In my experience in the past, you're not going to have a very good football team. Because the systems are well, easier? Well, no. De de defense is mostly effort. You know, it, it, early on. Offense is timing. It's, it's, it's simpler from the standpoint of we're not going to do much the first week. We just want to get guys flying around and get them lined up. Where offense, you know, you, 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 like you said, Danny, you got timing of it. You got plays changing at the line of scrimmage, motion shifts. You know, there's a lot more to think about early. Now, as the defense has progressed, then you get into all your blitz packages and stuff like that. Hmm. Adjustments, it's different. But early on, I, I really believe that, that when I heard that and people were like panicking and I'm listening here and, oh, God, you know, the, the defense is uh, shining the offense and a couple of prime. I said, well, that's good. I, I like that. That's what. That's the way it should be. And we got a lot of new guys. Think about the new guys we got on offense. You got, I mean, it, the best news was yesterday again. I mean, when I was there two weeks ago, I saw Mooney. It was the first day of pads. I think I mentioned it. I saw him get knocked down, jumped right up. Yesterday, same thing. He got hit twice. So, you know, he's back, but coming off of an injury. DJ Moore's new in the system. Uh, Claypool is relatively new. Uh, the uh, the little receiver, Tyreek Scott from Tyler Scott, Tyler Scott, Scott from Cincinnati, he's new. You know, you you look at the 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 offensive line situation. Cody's back at center, but you know it's, he hasn't been there in a while. Couple, you know, so Nate I mean, Davis is new. Darnell Nate, Wright's new. There you go. So I mean, you know, there's a lot of of new people out there doing things, and that all contributes to uh, to, to the offense not being where it's it's going to have to be. You know, three weeks from now against Green Bay. So you like hang out with Matt Eberflus when you go to these things? Well, you know, he's very nice to say, you know, come on in my office, let's sit down and talk, you know. And uh, I've been to a lot of Bears practices where, you know, I go in, people were very nice to me, and they walk me out onto the field, you know, and I meet the head coach out there. Matt, Matt has been outstanding. Ryan Poles, I mean, we stand there in the sidelines and talk for an hour just about stuff. You know, we have a lot of – he went to Boston College, Pitt. He's a Northeastern mm -hmm. guy. So we we know a lot of people connected that way. But everybody's been been so uh so so just nice. Just just good. So coach, um when you're in a baseball manager's office and you're in there, it's a level of real talk that can be jarring. Like, whoa, that's her actually telling me stuff. Same with the football coach. Like, is he really giving you the lowdown on certain people, on the dynamic with ownership and management, stuff that you can't say, stuff that he's trusting you not to say. Some things, absolutely, some things. And, you know, and and, and you hear how they talk about a certain player. Uh, I made a comment yesterday to uh, to Ryan. This guy's made plays every time that I've been there. And I says, boy, I says, Ryan, I says, that guy, I says, I don't know where he stands on everything, but I'm telling you, he's jumped at me every time I've been here. And he kind of gave gave us a wink, and, and you know, so they know. You so know, who was that? I ain't telling you. Oh, man, as a Coach. player, no, I, I'll tell you. Coach, I, I, I'll tell you. That, that, are open. That, that uh, one you could tell us. I'll tell you. You know who I'm really who caught my attention? The Sewell kid, the linebacker from Oregon. Noah Sewell. This guy flies around. He's real fast, right? He fl and he is physical. I mean, this guy is going to be a star on special teams, but I, I don't know how that linebacker thing is going to work out. I guess it's him and Sam, Sam Bourne, Bourne competing for the spot. You yeah. know, I don't know how the, how it's stacked on the depth chart. I didn't even look at the depth chart, but but that was good. And, you know, I really like uh, – uh, oh, and the other guy that jumped out, my, Yannick Ngakwe. Yannick coach, Ngakwe. Coach, he is a different <laughs> – coach, he is a different quickness. You know, That first step, huh? That first step – you know he's he's lean, but he can he can fly and he can dip and he can move and he's he uh, he was jumping in the front of the line. You know, uh, so he he definitely got my attention. Um, so yeah. it it was encouraging. And and then the, the offensive tackle, right? You know, Darnell Wright. I mean, he's going to be really good. It's just going to be a matter of 
of now, okay, now we've been blocking this 4-3 defense that we see. This week, now we're going to face the Titans, and they're a 3-4 defense. You know, it's going to be different. And now they add another blitz, and you've got to add the blitz pickup to it. You know, that's, that's where these young offensive linemen, where it takes a little bit of time. Have you heard the stat about Yannick Ngakwe that, mm-hmm. that everyone's throwing around? No. All right, so he is one of five players in NFL history. I brought this to you. I was so proud of this stat. Everyone's throwing it around. Uh, It's it's in every article. It's in every every article. Go ahead. I mean, Spiegs found this completely original (laughs) stat that everyone is stealing from Spiegel without attribution. Good. Tell me and I'll repeat it. I'll, I'll uh, give Spiegs. I'm going to give you credit. You're going to give Spiegs credit. That's okay. Right. He's the That's first right. one. He's, he's the first one to read it. He's known for NFL research. <laughs> he didn't read it. He conducted it. He conducted the research study. I did. Uh, I love it. Eight sacks or more mm-hmm. in his first seven years of his career. Five guys have done it. You want to take a guess? Or you want me to just give them to you? Bruce Smith. No. You Ooh. know one of them very well. Charles Haley. No. You, really? You coached one of them in college. Don't tell me. You almost redshirted him. Oh, Aaron Donald. Yeah, Aaron Donald. <laughs> yeah, Aaron, Aaron Donald. Uh, DeMarcus. DeMarcus Ware. I have yeah. all four. Go ahead. Derek Thomas. Yeah. Reggie White. Yeah. Yannick Ngakwe. I would, I would have guessed Reggie as one, but I... No. Wow, how about that? How yeah. about that research I did? Well, that, <laughs> that, that, that was impressive. That, and you know the impressive thing about Aaron Donald being on that list? Interior. Interior. Coach, a defensive tackle, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, rid- right? yeah, it's ridiculous. To have that kind of consistency with the pass rush is absurd. Yeah, but, so, so Ngakwe knows how to do that. He, he, was, he jumped out at me, Soul jumped out at me. Uh, I, I think that Stevenson will end up being the starter. I think we'll see how the preseason goes. But I'll tell you, the Terrell Smith kid from Minnesota – He's he, he's got good size and range, and and I know that just from hearing some of the comments and watching him, that they that they like him. I mean, he's going to be uh, he'll be part of this football team. Yeah, so. well, they'll need a lot of those guys. Uh, yeah. By the way, Mark Grody and his hit with us at the five o'clock hour is going to play some tape of Jack Sanborn talking about Noah Sewell because that's an interesting kind of dynamic. You know, yeah, what's going on there? Everybody fell in love with Sanborn. Now everybody's falling in love. With Sewell, there's only room for one with the starters. Um, all right, when you were talking about Ngakwe, mm-hmm. and man, I could listen to you talk about pass rushers. So he's he's tall. First step, first step. That's a, that's the first thing I watch when they're when they, when they line up. I you stand on the sideline and you just watch when the ball moves. I mean, there hasn't been a great pass rusher that I've been around Hall, and I've been around a lot of Hall of Famers that if didn't have a natural, fast, God given first step, then. They're they're late. They're going to be late. Richard Dent was that way. Richard Dent had a first step on him that even I had him in his last year. The guy could he still had it. Oh, still wow. had a you know one step maybe, but he still had. A step. <laughs> and how about you said he's got that dip yeah. from Gakwe, that body lean for like the big tall pass rusher is quick to still get around the you, edge. You can't play in circles. Anybody you know defense great defensive linemen don't play in circles. You know, the same distance, shortest distance, straight point, right? You got to get that. The quarterbacks now are getting rid of the ball at four or five yards. They used to have seven step back in the day. Think of that. They would be sitting back there six, seven yards deep. That gave you a real chance to get there. Now, most of these guys line up in the gun. They're five yards deep and and the ball's coming out. So you cannot afford very, very much to run around somebody. You got to be able to shorten that corner and lean and get hip to hip and tight. You know, who do you think of as the best? Like, I, I, I think Derek Thomas. I, I think, yeah. I think Von Miller. Like, gr- like it seems like they're running sideways, like so, so low to the ground. Like, who, who do you think of when you think of like great dip for a for a defensive? Well, end? you you mentioned two of them. I mean, you know, right there, Derek Thomas. Literally, he like his highlight package. It looks like he is. Yeah, and and they're line, vertical and or they're, horizontal to the ground. You know, and they're linebacker guys, so they're rush guys, right? But yeah. like big, yeah. tall guys, yeah. like in Gakwe, like did Jason Taylor have that dip and J- lean for you? Yeah, yeah, he was more speed, but he, but he could do it. He could do it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, the interesting thing will they play him every down, or will he just be used in the nickel package? Well, well he, I was gonna, he, he, did Eberflus tell you in the office? Because no. he says he's going to play him every down. Yeah, yeah. We no, we never. Uh, you know, I, I think they got to see what he can do. But the, he, he, he grades terribly against the run. Yeah. Well, maybe the, a lot has to do with the scheme too. I mean, you know, you, you, Jason Taylor played at two hundred and thirty-five pounds one year. Wow. 
So it don't, you know, it, it was all getting leverage on the guy, getting off the ball and and turning them loose, you know, and, and they kind of do that. I was I had a good talk with the defensive coordinator, and, you know, I, I we were just talking our schemes and Tampa schemes and some of the four, other 4-3 four, things, mm-hmm. and I said, you know, the, the thing that looks a little bit different is just how – I said, we were just so darn aggressive – with our defensive linemen. In other words, you know, we, we were kind of figuring out the gaps on the move. And uh, he says, well, we're, we're trying to get that way. You know, now once the guys understand their responsibility, we're trying to get them a lot more aggressive. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Jacksonville, Minnesota, Baltimore, Vegas, Indy. He's been on all of those teams already. Yeah, that that's the only thing that question. I, and who did I ask about that? Somebody. And they said, you know, you, you wait – uh, because I says, how, why'd the guy have so many productive years? He's young, but yet he never signed a long-term contract to anybody. Mm-hmm. And I think he's just one of those guys. And there, I've had play, different players approach it different ways where he wants the home, home run payday. And so he, wait, he waits it out and he doesn't get it because maybe people don't see him as a every down player. Maybe, maybe. So they hold off. They don't want to offer him that money. He holds off hoping somebody will, and then he ends up in the situation that he is right now with the Bears. Bears sign him to a one-year deal, Mm -hmm. and you know, and and the conversation will be, I mean, if he plays great halfway through the year, they may sign him to an extension. If he doesn't and he's okay after the end of the year, hey, God bless, move on, get on the road. Um, Texture's bringing up Robert Quinn, and we talked about that with Quinn a little bit last year, that he's a tall guy who yeah, had that. He's dip. built. You know, that's a good. He's built very similar to Robert Quinn. He is. Very similar. But, yes. But he's faster with that with that first. Yeah, uh, he's, he's a lot younger. Robert he, Quinn, when I was coaching at Pitt, we played him in a bowl game in North Carolina, and he was starting a defensive end. You know what I mean? Years ago. All right. So, so what do you love? That's crazy. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you love as a defensive coach? What do you love in a cover corner? Like, like what, what do you want them to show you? In terms of of like physical skill sets, the way that you're talking about a, a pass rusher. Again, it depends if you are going to be a press team or hands on the receiver, or you're going to back off and play zone. You know, we we were a press team, so we we wanted guys that could get their hands on them. Mm-hmm. And so to do that, you needed somebody with a little bit of size. You know. When you can get up there and get your hands on a receiver, and, and I've done studies with this, just like you, Spigs, but a little differently. <laughs> I've, I've, I used to do studies when we were in press or too deep, where we were rolled up. So if, whether you're pressed, you're rolled up on the receiver. If you're in a too deep, you're rolled up on them, but you're playing zone, but you're hitting them the same way. Different technique, but same idea. As compared to in a three deep zone where you're backed off and playing now zone and you're breaking on the throw, you're reading the quarterback, whatever it might be. And the sacks were almost, every place I've coached, the sacks were almost two to one when we were pressing or we were rolled up. Hmm. Because think about it. If you're rolled up on a receiver, number one, as a re, number one, it's going to take probably a little bit more time to run the route. You do a good job. Number two, you have to make an adjustment. If you've got a hook route called and I'm rolled up on you, you can't run that hook. You got to turn it into a fade down the field outside, or you got to turn into a quick slant. You have to make the adjustment. And then a quarterback, his timing gets thrown off, right? Well, before that, the quarterback needs to be on the same page. I need to know they're pressed. I see it. You see it. I need to know that you're going to run the quick slant and not the fade, or you know what I mean, so that yeah. so that I can make the throw and get the ball out, or I'm going to get sacked or throw an interception. So when I always thought that when you, so that's why the sacks were a lot more every place I've been when we were rolled up and aggressive as hmm. compared to not. When you're off, it's almost boy throw. If good quarterbacks, Dan Marino would kill you if you you know as an example in the old days. The, the, the great quarterbacks, the Peyton Mannings of the world, you're going to drop off and play zone. and You're not going to get to him, number one. And he's going to make a quick throw, and it's out. 